Alrighty, blind reaction to the differences between Islam and Christianity. Skipped a little bit of the boring intro part. I mean, for you guys, I actually watched it. And now I will give my commentary as an Ahmadi Muslim. Let's begin. We got a lot to talk about in this episode. When we first look at Christianity, Christianity consists of people who believe in the deity, Jesus Christ. Christians, generally speaking, believe Christ is the son of God and walked on earth as the incarnate form of God, the father. So in other words, they believe that Jesus was God in the flesh it which Islam disagrees with he was a prophet not an incarnation of God let's see what uh, this guy says Islam is made up of individuals who believe in the deity Allah which is just the Arabic word for God they believe that Allah's teachings were rep I love the distinction there it's just the Arabic word for God not a different God Judaism Christianity and uh, Muslims are Abrahamic faiths, which he uh, mentioned earlier, and they all believe in a single God. Therefore, God and Allah are the same person. I mean, being simply different words from different languages, meaning that a high power, or the high power, I should say recorded word for word by God's last prophet named Muhammad. Currently, Islam is the... Salaam uh, even if I butchered that, it translates to peace and blessings of God. Muslims usually say this every time they hear the name or say uh, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu Or you can just shorten it to saw, S-A-W, usually in texts. Second largest religion in the entire world after Christianity. And based on the latest estimates, the current global population of Christianity sits at 2.3 billion followers, which is 31% of the total population of the world. Islam follows behind at 1.8 billion followers. Sounds about right, but the question is how many people truly practice the Bible and really believe in the faiths or were just born into parents that called themselves Christian yet do none of the practices themselves. Anyway, that's yeah, a whole nother topic. Which works out to be approximately 24% of the entire global population. So as you can see, these two wow. religions, of course, have played a huge role in shaping what we know to be human history. Because look, look at this, this is half of the population here fall in between these two religions. Now, when yep. we look at when these two religions were formed as organized religions, Islam takes us back to 610 to 622 CE. Christianity, on the other hand, was established as an organized religion in 28 to 33 CE, which was centuries before Islam. So we hear the terms Christian, Christianity, and all of that. So what does Christian actually mean? If someone calls himself a Christian, what are they saying? Well, Christian simply means a believer in Christianity, which is someone that follows the teachings of Christ. Very simple. Now, Islam means submit. Whether it's true or not, uh, I heard somewhere that apparently um, it was actually the enemies of Jesus Christ that referred to his followers as Christians, and he himself didn't actually call his followers that. Uh, that may or may not be true, but regardless nowadays, people that believe in Christ are pretty much known as Christians, so whether it was an insult or genuine, doesn't really matter uh, nowadays. ...to the will of God, and those who submit to the will of God are called Muslims. When it comes to the place of worship, where do Christians go to worship? Well, of course, we know of churches. There's also chapels, cathedrals, basilicas, as well as Christians are allowed to worship in homes and any other living spaces. Muslims... Cool. I mainly knew about churches, uh, and I've heard of chapels and stuff, but I actually didn't know much about that. Cool, I'm learning. Muslims worship at mosques, aka masjids, and any other place considered clean by Islamic standards. So it's pretty open. There's not necessarily a specific place that you have to go to worship. Both. Yeah, even back in the day, people would take uh, their prayer mats or jan maze and uh, just you could pray anywhere. So, you know, if they were outside, you know, traveling or something, you know, even if the floor is a little dirty, you just pull out the mat and you pray on the clean mat. These religions are 
pretty open. One of the main differences between these religions is the doctrine of the Trinity. The Trinity or the Godhead is one of the core beliefs of Christianity and it states that there is one God who has three manifestations, the Father, the Son, as well as the Holy Spirit. And I kind of like to use this example, it's not really the best, but you got to think of it like a, a corporation who has three founders. And all of the three founders have different roles, but under the same umbrella corporation. No connection? What the... Okay. And so in this case, it would be like God, corporation, and then we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit, which is kind of equally all God. That's kind of how I try to wrap my brain around it, and hopefully that made sense for you. But Muslims, however, believe that they are the ones that practice true monotheism, which means that they do not accept the doctrine of the Trinity because how can three be one? And the core belief of Islam is that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. And it's a simple concept, there's just Allah, that's it. When it comes to the differences between the scriptures in Christianity and Islam, the holy book in Christianity, of course, is the Bible, and it's said to be the inspired word of God. This means different things to different people, but Pretty much, it means that Christians believe that the books of the Bible are written by many people over a span of 1,500 years, and those people were guided by the Spirit of God through divine inspiration. And these writings came through various different forms. You know, in the Bible, there's songs, there's poetry, there's stories, there's genealogies. And in these writings, we see personal expressions of human beings working side by side with God. Now, when we look at the holy book of Islam, the Quran, it is said to be the word of God. And it was dictated to Muhammad and it was written so down one. word for word without any sort of personal expression or any other humanness, if you will, added to the writings. The most. If you simply take it at the uh, Arabic language and fully understood, then that is completely correct. But nowadays, with lots of translations and commentaries, there is a chance that something isn't completely articulated as well as if you truly knew Arabic, which, you know, is not the worst thing. You get the gist of it, but, you know, if something seems a little odd, you know, that's more of a translation issue rather than God's intention or uh, something being incorrect, in my personal opinion. True reading of the Quran has to be in its original Arabic language because translating it into other languages can also take away from the interpretation of the Quran. So that's where a lot of times we get a little bit of confusion when it comes to the scriptures of the Quran. People are like, no, but in the original Arabic it means this, but if you translate it in English or another language, there's not necessarily a direct translation, so some of the context may be lost. So that's what they say if you- Oh, that's literally what I just said. I guess I should maybe let him talk a bit before I interject, otherwise it's just gonna sound very repetitive. Like I said, this is a blind react. Wanna get the most out of reading the Quran, learn some Arabic, or at least find somebody that knows Arabic and is very versed in the Quran to help you out. So yeah, we discussed- I mean, the, as helpful as that is, some people just don't have the time for that. There's nothing wrong with simply reading the translation to get the gist of it, you know. But read it with the intention of wanting to learn and asking questions, seeing if it really aligns with what you see about life. The whole purpose of the Holy Quran is to be able to be a guideline for life and be applicable. And... Um, so me personally, I, I have read it once entirely in Arabic and then once uh, with Arabic and translation alongside it. And you're technically supposed to read it a little bit every single day throughout your entire life. But, you know, I've been a little lazy or um, after I completed school, I didn't have access to a CCTV anymore as I'm visually impaired. Uh, and I guess that's not a good excuse now that it's online, but oops. Uh, anyway, um, long story short, 
uh, or the point being, just read it however is easiest for you. Of reading the Quran, learn some Arabic, or at least find somebody that knows Arabic and is very versed in the Quran to help you out. So yeah, we've discussed quite a bit so far, but before I continue in this episode, you definitely have to check out our playlist about Islam. And I have links to that in the card section of this episode, as well as below in the video description, and I'll also have it at the end of this episode. But in it, we have videos just dedicated to the religion of Islam, where we go into more of the history, as well as the impact that Islam has on the world. Because obviously I can't cover everything in this episode, but you definitely want to check those ones out. And as a bonus, we do have a playlist on religions in general, so I'll link to that one as well. There's a lot of learning that you can do here on FTD Facts. We've done a lot of videos about religion and culture here on FTD Facts, so feel free to check those out after this episode. Okay, so the next difference I'm looking at is the difference in the prophets. So in the Quran, the prophet Abraham was known as the beloved servant of God, and because of Abraham's devotion to God, God made many of Abraham's descendants prophets. Now the story of the prophet Abraham being commanded to sacrifice his own son Isaac is known in both Christianity and Islam. In Islam that son however who God told Abraham to sacrifice is Ishmael and it was through his lineage that Islam was established through the prophet Muhammad. In Christianity the son that Abraham was told to sacrifice was his son Isaac. And through the line of Isaac comes many prophets like Jacob, Joseph, Moses, David, King Solomon, and of course, Jesus Christ. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the differences in the beliefs of Jesus Christ in both of their religions. In Islam, Muslims accept that Jesus of Nazareth did in fact exist and that he was born of the Virgin Mary. But Islam also believes that Jesus was simply another prophet equal to other prophets before him. Muslims believe that Muhammad is the final messenger and is superior to all other previous prophets that came before him. In the Christian faith, they believe that Jesus is the Son of God, which makes him equal to God. And before he came to earth as a man, he was accepted as the second person of the Trinity. And another title that Jesus is given in Christianity before he came to live on the earth as a man is the Word of God. And then the Word of God came down to live on earth in human flesh. So uh, that's something about Islam and Muslims. Uh, We believe that God is eternal, all-powerful, has no children, and nothing came before him, nothing will come after him, like, as far as, like, successors or anything. He is, or, yeah, the eternal. Uh, And um, associating partners with God is not only a sin, but actually something called shirk, which is, like, an unforgivable uh the highest wrong thing that you can do um something like that uh in in the sense of like you know god or allah will forgive you of uh many things but there are a few shirks that are very upsetting to him uh, and uh, f- as far as I've been told, uh, you know, when I was younger, is that associating partners with God are like, uh, is like the the biggest no no. Uh, you should never do that. Islam doesn't believe in the idea that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. They believe that God spared him from that. In the Christian faith. God sacrificing his son Jesus on the cross is actually the focal point of the faith because without that, the world would remain hopeless, just doomed, humanity done. So that leads me to the next difference I want to highlight. What are the differences between the ideas of salvation in both of these religions? Well, Islam teaches that salvation is based on working to achieve it. So how it works is like this. A Muslim must keep the five pillars of Islam. They have to confess the Shahada, which is that there is no God but Allah as well Mm -hmm. as Muhammad is his prophet. And generally speaking, when Muslims pray, they are to pray towards Mecca five times a day. They must also fast during the daylight hours of the month of Ramadan. They're also required to give 
money to the poor, help out people who are in need, and make a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their life. Islam teaches that the Day of Judgment will involve people's good deeds and bad deeds being weighed side by side to see, okay, did the good deeds outweigh the bad deeds? Christianity has a much different concept of salvation and it teaches that a person is saved by the gift of God, which is through accepting the death of Jesus Christ through faith in Him. So therefore, you're no longer required to do a bunch of different good works to be accepted by God and be saved, but rather you're just saved through faith in Jesus and be no offense, but isn't that a flawed system? So if you just say, oh, I believe in Jesus, does that allow you to go around, you know, unaliving people and committing atrocities? Because, oh, you know, you believe in Jesus. I feel like that's uh, a very scary thing to believe in. Now, obviously, people don't enact that way, thankfully, for the most part. But, you know, if you took a little thought into that it's it's a very dangerous proposal because you're saved you just naturally want to now do good works because yeah who doesn't want to help out their fellow man and just be a good person in general we're coming down to the end of this episode and there's a couple things that i want to take a look at first of all is the clergy the different clergy in the two religions islam has imams and they are the ones that lead the congregational prayers in the mosques they also have sheikhs malana mullahs and muftis in their religion. In Christianity, there are priests, bishops, ministers, monks, as well as nuns as seen as official clergy. And what are some of the holy days that these religions recognize? Christianity... Uh, on a similar topic, um, uh, I am an Ahmadiyya Muslim or an Ahmadi Muslim. Uh, so we are, I believe, the 73rd sect of Islam, being the very, very last one. And to my knowledge, we are the only ones that believe in the Khalifa, which is basically our leader. Uh, basically, um, it was foretold that a promised Messiah would come to revive Muhammad Wasallam's teachings. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh Amy, these are the only ones that believe that he has come. I think it was in the 1800s or early 1900s, somewhere around there. Uh, don't quote me on the date. Uh, but basically, uh, now I believe the fourth or the fifth Khalifa is in, um, like, is around and is leading our community. Uh uh, yeah, uh, if I remember correctly, he just had a Jalsa in Germany. Uh, it's either going on now or has just recently passed. Uh, so basically, that's the step above everything he just mentioned, the imams and the mullahs and all that, and, you know, your mosque sadr and etc. So he's basically the highest leader, but only our sect believes in the Khalifa. All of the other ones, to my knowledge, are still waiting for the promised Messiah. Recognizes probably the biggest celebration in the world, Christmas, which celebrates the birth of Jesus. There's also Good Friday, which celebrates the death of Jesus. And depending on which denomination of Christianity you fall into, Sunday or Saturday is viewed as the day of rest or the Sabbath. Another holy day for Christians is Easter, which celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for Catholic Christians, they celebrate Lent, which is a season of 40 days, but it doesn't count Sundays. And this begins on a day called Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday. And Catholic Christians also celebrate different saint feast days. Islam, of course, has their fair share of celebrations, but officially not as much as Christianity. There's the month of Ramadan, which is a month of fasting. There's Eid al-Adha, which is the Feast of the Sacrifice, and Eid al-Fatir, which is a festival at the end of Ramadan. Now I've gotten to the final different... Oh, I, I've heard those names before, but I forgot about them. I usually refer to uh, them as Little Eid and Big Eid, which is basically uh, after the month of Ramadan, Little Eid, uh, you um, meet at the mosque, pray... 
and then you hug and give gifts to um, everyone around you. So it's similar to Christmas in that sense. And then once you're done meeting in, at the mosque, then you usually go to or invite other people to have uh, food with you. Uh, I don't know if that is part of the um, the religious holiday itself or if that's just what people decided to do because they were all free that day anyway. You usually take school or work off on uh, Eids. And then the other Eid is the one where you, you sacrifice a goat uh, and eat it in honor of the story he was saying, I think, of Isaac or Ishmael or something like that. I get the names mixed up. I need a brush up, and that's actually what I'm doing and why I'm watching and trying to uh, reintroduce uh, knowledge about my and other people's religion to be better informed. Um, yep, yep that I want to explore in this episode. So similar to Judaism, Islam tends to have stricter guidelines or rules than Christianity. Now in modern Christianity, most of the hardline rules of the Old Testament are more so related to Judaism now. And many of the rules found in the New Testament are sort of not as harsh as the Old Testament. For example, most Christians freely eat whatever they choose, including pork and foods that are not blessed by religious leaders. But this is something that Muslims and Jews do under the halal and kosher diet rules. So a lot of the ancient mm -hmm. traditions related to their... If I remember correctly, halal translates to permissible dietary laws as well as living laws still remain alive today. So that concludes this episode on the differences between Islam and Christianity. Now this video was presented in the most general sense possible. I know that Christianity and Islam has various different schools of thought and different denominations and all of that, which may have completely different views to anything I just shared in this episode. But for the most part, this is a general views and general differences differences between Islam and Christianity. So if you have any thoughts or comments about what I shared in this episode, feel free to leave them down below. I love the discussions that we have here on FTD Facts because not only do I get to learn, but we all get to learn together as a community. You can follow me on social media as well. Those links are below in this video description. So shoot me a message and I'll do my best to reply I'll to you as soon as I'll link this original video in mine. Until the next episode, stay awesome, stay educated, and you know, one love. My name is Leroy Kenton, and I'll see you soon. Awesome. And yeah, as he was saying, he uh, was speaking very generally. Obviously, he didn't go into the details of every single uh, sect, denomination, and every single one of their beliefs. But this is a great place to start if you were just a little bit curious. And yeah, I found absolutely nothing incorrect. Uh, with what he said on these uh, basic general um, explanations uh, on the Muslim side. I can't speak on the Christian side, but considering how well he spoke of Muslims, I'm pretty sure he did of Christianity. And I learned some interesting things about the Christian side. Uh, I hope you all learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully I didn't offend anyone. Um, thank you all for listening and watching. Uh, please like and subscribe for gaming and other content as well. This falls into the other. Have a nice day and an even better life.